you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger, your host and your co-host Eric Stocklin is missing. So I have a new co-host, Corey DeSoto. Yay! Yay! And guys, I have horrible news. (coughs) We just... Oh! Corey's (laughs) Corey's <laughs> vomiting. Um, we're on tour right now, and so obviously Eric's not with us, so I need to do the podcast. And I was like, Corey, will you do the podcast with me? And he said, yes, and I'm so excited. But we have bad news. We just uh, recorded <laughs> the entire intro to this podcast, and then our room service arrived, and so we took a pause. And when we paused, we realized that the audio was not recording. So if you want to see the original intro to this episode of the podcast, you can watch out my vlog channel. I'll just upload it over there. Um, but you'll hear Corey's who needs to relax today, um, which he said sparkle water needs to relax, uh, which I agree with wholeheartedly. So uh, we are in Canada and we're on tour. We were in Winnipeg and Calgary and tonight we're in Edmonton and it's literally, I'm going to look at the time. It is... 11 10 p.m. and the sun literally just went down a little bit ago which is so weird and I'm very hopeful we're gonna see northern lights but I know it's not gonna happen but I just a girl can dream it's like a dream you I mean you've never seen the northern lights no I've never seen northern lights well tonight might be the night Corey there was this tv show that when people see the northern lights they got superpowers so I'm really hoping that happens (gasps) what tv show is it like the northern superpower lights. Oh, I don't even know. Fabulous. It's like it was like this like monsters. I don't know. But anyways, like what would your northern light superpower be? <gasps> if I had a superpower, no. Oh, northern light superpower. Oh, my northern light superpower would be farts that are beautiful colors and glitter. Okay, and I would want farts that smell like fortune cookies. Fortune cookies. That's yeah. So specific. Fortune cookies have the best taste. I think a candle... Taste, but why are you tasting people's farts? You no, mean smells. I'm I gay, guess do first sp- of all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we but taste they- a lot of things. <laughs> I'm not gay and I taste a lot of things. <laughs> oh my god, I'm clean. <laughs> I don't mean like that, Uh-oh. but maybe I do. Um, no, but I'm just saying that of all the flavors or scents that you could choose. I just never would have thought you would have said fortune cookies. (coughs) You want your farts to smell like fortune cookies. That's like very specific. This is something you've thought about before, it seems. Yeah, it has been. And you know what? Like, I just think of like the smell of freshly baked fortune cookies. I think it would smell amazing. Yeah, I guess it smells like when you go to like an ice cream shop and they have fresh... (gasps) The waffle cones. Yeah, that's kind of... Okay, maybe that's what I meant. That's just such a specific, like, of all the super fa- powers you could pick, you'd choose, like, your farts to smell like fortune cookies. Okay, relax. I'm not mad about it. I'm, Let's go I'm, back in time so I can change it to waffle codes. <laughs> no, I think it should be fortune. Fortune cookies is more unique. Fine, okay. Um, mine, yeah, I guess mine would just be, I would want my farts to be so beautiful. I like that my farts stink, though. Because I like people. <laughs> this is a weird thing about me, I guess. No, what nothing makes me laugh harder than a, than when my farts stink and someone else smells my. Ew, fart. Colleen. <laughs> um, you guys, this might be one of my favorite episodes of Relax ever because it's. You guys are literally just gonna get a little view of what it's like to hang out with me and Corey. Like we're so annoying. <laughs> it's gonna be. I was thinking about this before you came in here. I was like. This episode is going to be so funny for us and, and probably no one else, no one else. <laughs> because Corey and I, like we have the same brain and we mm-hmm. laugh at like, like, okay, on the plane ride, <laughs> on the plane ride over here today, um, uh, yesterday, I don't know, whenever we flew last, um, we were landing and they were like, all right, we're going to need to uh, make sure we make room for passengers who have connecting flights. There's some connecting flights too. And I pretty sure he said Regina. Yes, he did. And I didn't know that was in place, first of all. But Corey and I... Oh my God, we're so stupid. <laughs> we have not spoken the whole flight. No. We did not speak to each other the entire... We're sitting next to each other the whole time. We don't look at each other. We don't talk the whole time. He says the word Regina over the intercom, and Corey and I whip our heads towards each other with the biggest eyes, like, oh, 
Like, we were like, oh my gosh, you said vagina. vagina. That sounds like vagina. Like, we were like, so No, but we didn't even have to say that. No, we just we said it with, the, within with our, our eyeballs. Eyes. Yeah, I know. We were both you like, telepathically were laughing inside we, of each other's we bodies. Both, like, we both whipped with each other and looked at each other, and then we both just bust <laughs> up laughing. And Corey was like, I hate, hate you. you we're the so same person. much. Which, by the way, tonight <laughs> on stage, um, I we were singing and I sang I hate you yeah. on stage and then Corey started saying I hate you. like we were like again proof that like no one's probably gonna like this episode but you and me because even on stage tonight we were like laughing on stage going like I hate you and the audience is like what's going on but yeah, <laughs> you, like, you and I are like crickets. having the time of our lives they're like okay anyway um, if you're watching this episode you'll see that I'm rhinestoning a skirt because this is just what I do now on tour, I guess. But um, we're having a blast in Canada. If you want to go here, Corey's Relax, you can go, like I said, watch on my vlog. But for me, I want to do a relax. So um, we are just about to talk about it before our room service got here. So I'm excited to dive into it right now. I'm just checking to make sure my audio is still going. It is. So um, on the way here uh, from L.A., we, we had a layover in Vancouver. And then we flew to... Uh, Winnipeg and on our flight to Winnipeg the craziest thing happened on the plane and so who needs to relax for me this week is the man on the airplane so we met this lovely flight attendant she was fabulous I loved her so much and she was the queen of the world she she like said that she watched my videos and she was just hilarious and she talked to us most of the flight and she said that she gave um, birth to her daughter right before I gave birth to Flanners, I think. Like, her daughter's a little bit older than my son. And mm. she was saying, she was so funny, she, I was asking her about her birth story, because I love hearing about birth stories. And she said that um, she, while she was pushing out her baby, she asked for a <laughs> Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. She's like, I was eating a fast food chicken sandwich while I was pushing that baby out of me. I was like, you are an icon. So she, anyway, she was very funny and fabulous. So she's, while she's talking to us, all of a sudden she just stops and she looks at us and she goes like, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on, but there's a man behind me filming me right now. And I looked and there was. You looked too, Wasn't right? that a weird feeling though? I thought it was it a was joke. Weird. Yeah, it was, I was weird. I did not know it was a real thing. Well, I, I, I got like, I felt stupid because I like got cocky for a second because when she said there's someone filming us, oh. I thought, I was like, oh, is there like someone behind who's like seeing my videos is trying to sneak a picture or something yeah. like so my cocky because that's stupid happened brain I, yeah but i was like oh they're probably trying to film like i'm so annoying and like that's what i thought at first and then she was like this i think this guy's trying to film me or whatever and i looked and he was he had his phone up and he was like very obviously oh and that th you know the very like close to your double chin like face like yeah back Trying like, to sneak a pic. It was very right, obvious. Right, it was very obvious. So we both saw that he was doing that. She's like, can you see? Is he is he actually filming me? I was like, uh, it looks like it to me. And Corey's like, yeah, he's filming you. And so she was like, uh, I have to deal with this. And so then she like walked away. And she went and talked to another flight attendant. And then <clears throat> her and this other flight attendant walked up to that man and he was being creepy and filming her. Like, he's filming her, like, butt. Like, he was, like... Because she... Her back was to her, towards him because she was, she was talking, talking to us. us. So, um, he was being a total creep. And then Corey was saying, while she was talking to other flight attendant, I was like, was he really filming her? And Corey was like, yeah, guys do it all the time. Yeah. And I'm really ignorant to this kind of stuff, I guess. I don't really go out of my house. So, but Corey, you know, was saying that at the gym, that happens all the time. Like, guys, is that true? Like, guys... All the time. Really? They just, like, no shame. We'll Clean. Just, I see guys do it everywhere. I see it at Disneyland. I see it at restaurants. I see it at the gym. It's gross. Just filming girls' butts? Their booties, their boobs, their everything. So but I'm like, ew, why? What are you going to do with that? Ugh, so disgusting. So anyway, um, he was doing that. And so uh, that, and which is just so violating and so gross. Like, yeah. ugh, what a loser. So anyway, um, she then goes up to him with the other flight attendant. And they're right behind us. They're in the row behind us and across from us. So we could he kind of hear what she was saying. I couldn't really hear him. But um, she basically was like, excuse me, sir. She's very sweet and very professional. And she's like, excuse me, sir. Were you filming me? Yeah. And I couldn't hear him respond, but I'm assuming he said yes. Because she goes, that is extremely inappropriate. You cannot film me without my consent. I need you to delete that. And he wouldn't. He was refusing. And then, you know, he's denying it and whatever. And she was like, and sir, you need to delete that. That is 
inappropriate. You cannot film someone without their consent. And she just stood her ground so firmly. She like wouldn't back off. And I was like, oh my gosh, because I hate confrontation. So I started freaking out. I was like, oh my God, there's a confrontation this right next to me. This is crazy. Mm. But at the same time, I was so impressed with her because like she mm-hmm. was like sticking up for herself. And then she was like, did you film me? Did you film me? And finally he admitted he did. And she was like, why would you do that? Why would you film someone without their consent? Do you know how creepy that is? That's so creepy. Like she straight up was just like yeah. telling him like, that's so inappropriate and so creepy. Why would you do that? She said, why would you do that? And he said, for fun. For fun. Like, so gross and annoying. And she was like, well, you need to delete it. And he's like, I don't know how. And she's like, you don't know how to use your phone? How long have you had that phone? He's like, three months. She's like, you've had that phone for three months and you don't know how it works? Delete it. And he's like, I don't know how. And she's like, you do know how. She's like, I cannot touch your thing, so I can't grab it and delete it myself. I want to watch you delete the footage you took of me. It is illegal for you to do that. Like, you can't do that with my stuff, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I'm not doing it. He, like, refused. He was such a jerk. And I just want to set the scene. This man is was drunk. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and um, he was. I guess Corey had said that he was kind of hands or like flirty or he something. He was with her very flirty before. So before. Corey had witnessed before this happened him like being kind of obnoxious to her. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, so then she was like, "If you don't delete it in front of me, I will have the cops deal with you." And he said, "Okay." And she was like, fine. And she held her ground. I was like, she's so awesome. I would never have the strength to do that. I was so impressed with her. Mm-hmm. And so when we landed, the cops had to get on the plane and they, escort they, him off. Yeah, they asked everyone, please stay, sit down just for a little bit. The police are going to come on the plane. So, yeah, the police came and took him. And it was infuriating, you guys, because he was so cocky. And I just hate that there are men out there who, one, will do something that disgusting and then be so cocky that they know they're going to get away with it. Like, if a police man ever came up to me to, like, escort me off a plane because I did something wrong, I'd be sobbing. I'd be, like, freaking out, sobbing, shaking, so scared, and he was so cocky. They came on, they're like... Uh, sir, will you come with us? He's like, oh, yeah. I, I would love, love to, to, remember? Yes. He said, I would love, love to. to. Like, so obnoxious. And um, it just made me so angry that he did something to mm. make her feel violated, make her feel uncomfortable without her consent, make her feel like her body was just something he could use for his own pleasure when he didn't even know her. Like, what a horrible feeling for a woman to have to feel. And then when he got called out, no responsibility, no accountability, doesn't have any consequences. The police escort him off and he was like cocky about it. It's like, oh, love to come with you. Like such a brat. And at that moment, I remember you telling me and this stuck with me, he didn't care because he knows nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen to him. Yeah, there was like a bunch of white cops taking a white man off a plane. I was like, nothing's going to happen. Like, I was so annoyed. Oh, and another thing that the flight attendant told me was that one of the reasons he said that he was filming her was because it was like reminded him of his, like someone in his family had recently passed away. And so he was doing it to remember the person who had passed away in his family. Like, he was coming up with all these weird excuses and, like... (laughs) So he filmed the lady's booty. Like, what? Like, he was just, like, coming up with... But, like, what a brat that when she was like, why would you film me without my consent? He was like, for fun. Like, oh, gross. gross. So, um, yeah, that happened on our flight to Winnipeg. And um, so that man needs to relax. And I don't know what happened post all this I don't know what happened with the cops I don't think the cops can do much in that situation other than like make him or ask him to delete that you know footage um but I don't even know the rules of that like if that really was something they would ask like you know I don't know what the laws are like can they really force him to open up his phone and delete something like I don't really know I I, from the tv shows and the true crime documentaries that I watch I always thought you needed like a permit to open someone's phone yeah like a search warrant. Right. That's what I thought too. So I don't know what happened to him, but that was the drama Ugh. on our flights. And it, I felt so bad for her. She but was I'm also proud of her. Me too. She because was you so know what? Awesome. 
next time that man does that, he's going to think twice. He will. He might do it again. He probably will do it again. But at least he'll have that memory in oh, his yeah. head of her trying to, like, call him out and kind of humiliating him in front of other people. And then cops having to come and, like, escort, escort him off the plane. Like, hopefully he'll always think about that. Even if he does be a creep and, like, do it again. At least, hopefully... He'll at least maybe think about it for a second before he actually follows through with it. So. And and to show others that were around us, like, hey, this isn't cool. You should not film people. Right. Without their consent. Consent. Um, in an obviously sexual manner. Right. So, yeah, that was craziness. Um, but I do want to say, I wanted to, I, I want to say thanks for our first sponsor. Um, but before I do that, I want to let you guys know that. I asked you guys who needs to relax, and you guys sent us a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to read through those and get Corey's opinion on all of the things that you guys think should relax these days. Um, So we're going to do that in a minute, but first, we're going to say a little thank you to our sponsor. Stamps.com, you guys. We love Stamps.com here on this podcast. We're so grateful they just keep sponsoring us, and we love them. Let me tell you all about them. When you are running a small business, every second counts. You can't afford to waste a single moment, and that is why we love Stamps.com. You don't have to waste time going to the post office if you can be using Stamps.com, guys. It makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. We use Stamps.com, and it has made our lives so much easier. We have saved so much time going to the post office. Uh, We just run everything from our own little house, and it's lovely and perfect and a total lifesaver. So you guys should check it out if it sounds like it might help you and your small business. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. Streamline your shipping process with Stamps.com's easy-to-use software. All you need is your regular computer and a printer. No special supplies or equipment is needed. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. So whether you're an office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code RELAX for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code RELAX. All right, guys, so I asked you on Twitter uh, what needs to relax. The number one thing people said was the heat. Like, everyone was saying, it's so hot, it's so hot, the heat, the heat, the heat. I don't have any Like, I was shocked. Like, I ask who needs to relax all the time. I've never gotten so many responses that were all the same as I did today. Like, everyone said the heat. So I agree, the heat is disgusting. I would way rather be cold than hot. I think the heat is the grossest thing in the world. Would you rather be cold or hot? Oh, no. Cold, of course. Would anyone rather be hot in the world? Yeah, like cold-blooded animals. But like humans? There can't be humans who would prefer to be hot than cold. I've heard there's like reptile people in the government. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I feel like I've heard that weird conspiracy theory. You've heard it, right? I think I have heard this one. So perhaps it's true. But, you know, we have a story about being really hot. Like, like attractive? Well, that too. But in temperature. Oh. Yesterday, when we landed, um, after we both got excited about Regina, oh, oh, yeah. we had to take a cab to our hotel. Wait, are you sure you want to talk about this? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, it's nothing bad. So it was, we were in, so we took a cab to our hotel and it was hot. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, do you mind turning on the air conditioner? And the guy was like, sure. He was really nice. And he turned on the air conditioner and it was blowing hot air on us. And then um, I, so because I can't ask questions, you guys know I talk about on the podcast all the time how I'm like terrified to, like, I can't call and order a pizza. Like I can't ask someone, I can't do anything. Like I can't make any phone calls. I can't ask people for anything. If I tell you I am allergic to pineapple, so take it off of my dish before you bring it and they bring me pineapple, I will eat it all just to avoid, even if I'm like deathly allergic to pineapple, I would eat it all just to avoid 
sending food back in a restaurant. Like I will never return food. I will never complain. I like, I'm like terrified of these things. So I, I, I was so hot that I asked the man who's driving the car for air conditioning. And he said, sure. And he turned it up. And in his car, when we got in the car, it was probably like 85 degrees. Like it was pretty hot in there. And so it starts blowing hot air on us. And I was like, oh, it just needs a minute to like cool down, you know? And so then after like a couple minutes, I took Corey, not to the man, because I was like, I already asked him. I already did my allowance of like as much as my anxiety can handle of asking this man for something. So I looked at Corey and I was like, oh my God, I'm so hot. And he heard me, which I was mortified by. And he's like, oh, you're hot. I'm sorry. I'll turn it down. So he like was turning down the air conditioner to a lower temperature. He's like, it's down to like 69 degrees now. You should be good. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. But it wasn't working, I guess, because it was blow blowing like boiling hot blow. It was like someone had the biggest, most intense blow dryer in the world to blow dry your hair, but like blowing it on our faces. And it was up all the way. And I had already asked this man to turn on the air conditioner and I'd already you know, told Corey I was hot. So he, he turned it up for us and I said, thank you. So I was like, I can't ask him again to turn it on. It's clearly broken. So I don't want to be like, it's broken, turn it off. But I didn't want to be like, can you just roll down the windows? I just, so I just didn't say anything. I just sat in misery in, in the heat. So Corey and I were both like, it was like sweltering in the, it was so unbelievably hot. And it was like, I would say easily a hundred degrees in there. It was really, really warm. Was it not really super the most warm ever? Yeah. You don't feel like it was hot in there? No, maybe for you. Oh, oh my gosh. I guess I'm just super dramatic. But I felt like it was like super, super hot in there. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? This is so freaking hot. To the point where when we finally got to our hotel, when I opened the door to get out, it was probably like 80-ish degrees outside. But it felt like it was cold outside when we got out of the car. I was like, it was so crazy. But the point of me saying this is that when I get hot... I get a really bad stomach ache and I get like, I feel like I'm going to throw up and have diarrhea and I feel like I'm going to faint like all at the same time. So the reason I'm saying all this is because I remember I was like, I feel like I'm going to faint. Like when we got out of the car, I was like, I feel like I'm going to faint because it was so hot in there. I guess not. It wasn't that hot. I guess it, maybe it was just hot to me or maybe it was just blowing the air, hot air was blowing on me and maybe not as much you, but, um, but it was so hot in there that I felt like I was going to faint or have diarrhea or like pass out. And then, so today when everyone was commenting that it was so hot um, and that they don't like the heat, like that was what, like the number one tweets that I got, I was like, I wonder if other people have that. Like when you get super hot, do you get, feel sick? Yeah. Like I get nauseous. Yeah, my mom my mom would always tell people like I couldn't be outside for long. Because, she did? Yeah, because I get like like I was <laughs> I was such a nerd like being outside in the sun and fresh air like killed me. Yeah, oh, same. I needed to be in four walls. Me too. I want to be inside. I don't I don't like extreme weather, but like especially with heat. Like I will like Im I remember I was somewhere with Eric where it was really hot. And I said to him like, oh, it's, I'm so hot. I'm going to get diarrhea. And he was like, <laughs> what? And I was like, you don't get diarrhea when you're hot? And he was like, no. So I don't know if that's just a me thing, but kind of no, everything. No, I, th I think that I feel that way. I don't know if it's diarrhea pains, but I do get sick. Yeah, I, I feel ill. I don't feel good. Yeah. I hate being hot. And then I was thinking about how, you know how like in places where the sun like never comes out and it's like dark forever, how like like depression gets really bad and yeah. people get really sad and whatever. I feel like it's probably the same in places where it's super hot. There is like overly happy. No, the opposite. I mean, wouldn't, don't you think it would cause like, I feel like it would cause like major like mental health issues if you were like not used, like I feel like everyone's complaining about it. I'm like, I'm sure this, it affects me <laughs> a lot whenever it's like super hot out. So I'm like, I bet this is oh, like, Oh, I see what you're saying. Like I bet it causes like mental health um, it like exacerbates the problem of like mental health when you're like frustrated about being too hot and stuff. Yeah, well, because you're like you uncomfortable. uncomfortable. You're sweaty. Your pants are sticking to your your shirt sticking to you. Yeah, yeah no fun. It's torture. So, yeah. It, anyway, the other it, anyway in that car, the man the man driving us was the sweetest. He was so sweet, and I, so I didn't want him to feel bad that his air conditioning wasn't working. So I didn't say anything. Um, so I was just like 
sitting in the heat, but I was like, I'm going to faint. I'm going to have diarrhea in the car. I'm, I was like freaking out because I started to feel so sick because I was so hot. So anyway, curious out there, listeners, do you guys get nauseous or sick when you get super, super hot? Because everyone was saying that they don't like the heat. So that was like the number one thing everyone said. That was Everyone said that heat needs to relax. Um, okay. This person said, um, Kai's Carter said, gum needs to relax. Gum. Gum. One piece is never enough. Two pieces is too many. How am I supposed to have minty fresh breath under these conditions? What so, gum are you chewing? First of all, yeah, I need to know the brand of gum you're chewing. Yeah. Um, but. Because if it's like a bubblicious, that's a big chunk. That's a big chunk. That, it, two of, two bubblicious is, is too many pieces. Oh, I need watermelon bubblicious right now. <gasps> I love grape. <gasps> Ew! <laughs> I do. I love grape. Grape is medicine flavor, Colin. I love the grape kind. <laughs> I love it. Um, the only other person I've ever known who likes the grape flavor gum is, is Jessica. Jessica. We love it. Grape bubble tape. Oh my god! I will eat that entire roll of bubble tape. Um, Sounds like vomit tape. But I have something really weird about gum. What? I wonder, this is another thing I wonder if anyone else out there listening is like this. I, when I eat gum, I can only have it in my mouth for like 20 seconds. I want it. I like it. Give me the gum. I want to chew on it. And then it has, I have to spit it out or I'll start gagging. Oh, no. Like how long could you chew on a piece of gum? I think I could do it for a long time. Like, what are you talking, like an hour? Well, I grind my teeth all the time, so it, like, gives me an activity inside my mouth instead of just grinding my own, like, flesh. Oh, nice. But you will literally chew the same piece of gum, like, even if it doesn't have any flavor? Mm, Yeah, sometimes. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. That's so insane. I I cannot, I, like, literally can't. I wonder, so anyway, I'm just curious if anyone listening feels that way too like if you can't chew on a piece of gum for longer than like no but i totally get what you're saying like once it's even slightly lost its flavor i'm like i gotta spit this out i'm gonna throw up really i think i'm just like high maintenance maybe <laughs> i don't know i feel like i'm just learning about myself in this episode that i'm like very high maintenance i'm like it's too hot my gum doesn't have enough flavor i'm just like well i it I, for me it's it i guess it's not like flavors because like I have so much anxiety. I'm always tapping my yeah. leg. I'm always shaking. So like chewing gum is like another thing like that. Instead of like tapping my leg, I'm like la 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 la. Yeah, something in your mouth. Yeah. Um, and I don't like mints because people go like, oh, if you don't like chewing gum, why don't you eat mints? I don't like mints. There, it's like too much. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. Like it's like ugh. She needs like ten percent. Oh my god! Less. Yeah, I think mints make me gag. Yeah, they're like kind of gross. Like I'm sucking and like eating flavored spit but it's like really strong flavored spit yes it's like it's like too much it's like too like you're eating toothpaste i don't like when i like i like to be cold but i don't like if i breathe in my mouth is cold oh that's like the menthol yeah like i don't need that that's not something i need in my life have you ever washed your body with menthol what are you talking about don't get it close to any holes just tell me why are you washing your body with menthol i thought everyone does with menthol? Yeah. What? Like, you know, sometimes soaps have, like, the menthol in it. Am I insane? And it, like, I gives you what... tingles? Like, the cough drops menthol? Eh? Hey? <laughs> Wait. Are you talking about mint? <laughs> Maybe. Wait. I thought menthol was that thing in cough drops that, like, like burns your sinuses. I thought menthol was, like... The ingredient that make makes you feel cold, like when you blow. Yeah. Yeah, it's in a soap. What? Because, okay, Eric and I did an episode where we um, got this stuff that makes you cry. Cry. And it was menthol, and you blow it in your eyes, and it, like, burns. I swear there's, like, a certain kind of soap that you put on your body, and it's, like, cold and tingly on your body. And when you get it to, like holes it's not supposed to go near that well, yeah because that's like it makes you cry when you put it near your eyes like it burns when we did it we were both like our tears were streaming down our face because it burns so bad yeah i can't believe that's in soap where are you getting this um what kind of store are you getting your soap it's a grocery store <gasps> trader joe's they have menthol soap yes i'm gonna bring it to you okay i want to try it because i've never heard of this you're gonna be tingling all over <laughs> okay um, I love that somehow we went from gum to menthol soap, but okay. The next uh, one was, 
I'm wondering if you have any stories about this. So this person said, okay. Stephanie said, <clears throat> her app is Violent Pudding, which I think I love that I like app. that too. Um, she said, people who are rude to retail or customer service workers. Yeah. We're just doing our jobs. And so I hate this. I hate when people are rude Same. to customer service people because, first of all, people who work in customer service do not, and, and in retail, do not get paid enough to deal with the crap that they deal with. Mm-hmm. Like, the the entitlement and the rudeness that they have to endure for how much they're paid is so unfair. Like, it makes me it makes me want to explode when I see people being rude to people who are doing customer service or retail. Seriously. It happened the other day. We were, we were at the airport again. Um, and this uh, we were getting food. And this woman was That's calling right. the numbers, and she like called a number, and she no, she wasn't calling. She numbers. wasn't calling she numbers. She was calling the she food was calling orders. The food. She said, "Oh, a bacon cheeseburger or whatever," and this guy was like, "Say the numbers," and she was like, "Oh, it's a bacon cheeseburger, sir. You didn't get the bacon cheeseburger. This man did. It was for him," and she gave it to the man who ordered the bacon cheeseburger. He's like, "We well, should be saying the numbers, not the not what the food is." And he's like yelling at her, yeah. and I was like, "She's just doing her job, like." Some people don't keep their receipts and might not have the numbers. So, like, I don't know. It made me so mad. But anyway, you've worked all over the place. Yeah. You've worked in lots of different jobs. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if you have any good stories about people being rude to you when you worked. I mean, you've worked all over the place. I've worked all over the place. I'm trying to think. If you've had one, like, I'm stories sh- of someone being every day, or... Every day, a customer would be crazy and weird. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one. Because I've never worked in uh, retail. There was a man that you would poop in the store like every couple of months. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my God. What? Yes. There, there is a, a, a secret pooper, we'd call him. And every couple Wait, months. What? Yes, a secret pooper. And so every every couple months, I worked at Sam's Club and there was a secret pooper. And every couple months, there would be this man and he would poop. And then in the aisles. Where? In the aisles? Yeah. Not in the bathroom? Like I thought you were going to no. say like on the bathroom floor. No, on the in the aisles. And so... What? This is... Crazy. And so one time the secret pooper came and there was poop in the aisle and there was like, ah, dig it. So we took a box to cover the poop because you have to get dressed in PPE to clean it up. You can't mm-hmm. just clean it up. Yeah. And so one of the managers that everybody hated, what is this box laying in the middle of the store? Oh no. Runs up to it, kicks it, <gasps> poop smeared no! all over her shoe the secret pooper got a good <laughs> did you ever find out who it was we loved no yeah i don't know who it was but do, isn't there cameras all over those stores yeah people were saying like maybe he did it like in his pants and then would wiggle it out his leg <laughs> oh. <laughs> i swear this is 100 percent true like this is what goes on in retail y'all oh my- God. It's crazy. I remember when we worked at Macaroni Grill, we worked at a restaurant together. Um, there was there wasn't a secret pooper, but there were often crazy poopers who would like the because part of the, our job as like because we were hosts or and a hostess at this job and singers at this restaurant. Yeah. And um we'd have to clean the bathrooms. And remember we'd always talk about how there's like always huge sometimes there's poops on the walls or on the floor in there but like a lot of times it just people would just poop in the restaurant and not flush yeah it's like always oh, yes. there's always like huge poops in the bathroom always i was like what's going on we all fight over who had to go clean up the poops. see this alone you need to respect retail workers like this is what we have to deal with crazy and that's not even talking about the people who are rude like that's just like people no. pooping um, oh, actually, this is a good question for you. I have a question for you, Corey. Speaking of poop, we talk about poop a lot on here. What? Um, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about poop because we always do. And I was, Eric was saying how, okay, Eric thinks I'm insane okay. because I will poop in public. Like, I will poop in public places. Well, yeah. not like in aisles of Sam's Club, <laughs> but in like public restrooms. Like, if we went out to dinner, like, I would have no shame pooping in the bathroom or like at the theaters we go to, like I'll poop in the bathroom. Like I don't, I'm not weird about that. But um, Eric thinks I'm crazy. He's like, no, you poop at home. Like that's no one poops out and about at a bathroom. Like that's crazy. And I was like, what? How do you hold it? Like I couldn't hold in a poop. I could never hold in a right. poop. Right. Oh, but the comments were saying I was crazy. The comments were like, Colleen, no, you are not poop. crazy. 
What? I know. No one poops in public. I'm is blowing no, my mind. No, that terrifies me. Hold it in. I feel like the toxins are getting like leaked in my body. Yes, I is, need it out. Get I it know. out of me. I'm like, what? So I guess like everyone thinks I'm a weirdo that I. No, <gasps> Colleen, I would public. never. No, then I'm a weirdo because that's insane. Yeah, when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? Like. Who can gotta hold go, it? gotta go, gotta go right now. Gotta go, gotta go right now. <laughs> Have you heard that commercial? Uh, is that about pooping? It was like, it's yeah, it's like one of those medicines that helps you not go in the bathroom as much. Oh my gosh, I need that. Like an Imodium? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you for being the same as me. By the way, we were talking about, I don't know if we talked about it in this version of the podcast or the one that we accidentally messed up and don't have the audio for anymore, but we were saying how like no one's going to listen or like this episode. Because, did, was that this episode? Yeah. <laughs> or was this, I don't know if we... It we was this like, episode, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, because we, we were talking about how Corey and I have the same brain. Ew, were that those annoying people that have an inside joke? Yes, everything Ew. is an inside joke. We are that annoying person. We need to relax. We're sorry. We're literally that person. Okay, I'm going to do one more before the next um, sponsation. Okay. Um, okay, I don't know if you can relate. Wait, hold on. I don't know if you can relate to this one or not, but Laura said, bras, bathing suits with removable padding. They always twist around and bunch up, causing odd lumps and bumps and it's super annoying to try to get the pads back in place in the right spot yes laura i agree with this this is like in girls um bathing suits they have like these mm. little patty things that they always fall out and they get twisted and they're a hot they're really obnoxious some oh. girls say like just pull it out but like if you i don't want like i don't like the feeling of like my nipples like you know like being pokey dokey through yeah so i like the padding because it like shields that from happening if you get cold but what I don't like, this just made me think about something I hate about women's bathing suits. And I don't know if they do this with anything with boys, but in women's bathing suits, in the part where your regina goes, they have this weird sticker that they put inside. It's this gross, what? like, plastic, nasty sticker. And it's so that, like, if you try on without underwear on, I guess, if you're disgusting, if you ever try on a bathing suit without underwear on, yeah, then, because bathing suits for girls are so tight to your skin, it's like so that there's a protecting seal <sighs> between you and the material in case someone else buys it. Yeah. But then when you get home, you have to take this sticker out of this these bathing suits. Now, Wait, all, the sticker that's been touching everybody? Oh, there's vaginas. So, Ooh. we all know... I have an issue with stickers. Like, yeah. I hate stickers. I think they literally make me vomit. Like, I think stickers are so gross. Again, learning something about myself that I'm way too high maintenance. Like, who has a problem with stickers? But anyway, I don't like stickers. Um, so I already have an issue with stickers. So whenever I buy a bathing suit, not only do I have to face my fears of touching a sticker, but it's a sticker that's touched other yeah. people's bits. Well, yeah. Is there, is there anything like that with guys' clothes? No. No, because you guys don't have, like, really tight clothing that, like... Mm-mm. would get your nastiness on it well the gays love a speedo that's true but i've um i've never seen that sticker inside of one of them yeah but do, have you seen the sticker in like in girls bathing suits no I, no i have to show you no. them they're so nasty they like they gross me out and also now that i'm thinking about it they don't have them in like girls any other any other things that girls wear they only put those in those Oh, yeah, so, like, well, I was going to say if you try on underwear, but who tries on underwear? Right. Do women try on underwear? No, I don't. I don't think so. No. I mean, you try on, like, bras, obviously, because that's... You have to see if it fits. Yeah, but underwear, no way. You just know your size. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I hope no one's trying on underwear. But bathing suits make sense, because you want to see if it, you know, looks good, matches, whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, that nasty freaking sticker, that thing to me needs to relax. I think that thing is so freaking nasty. I can't stand those gross stickers in those bathing suits. That's crazy. Anyway, speaking of gross stickers and bathing suits, I think it's time for us to talk to our next sponsor of the day. (laughs) So we're going to take a little quick um, break to say thanks to our next sponsor. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. That is not their theme song, but maybe it should be. We love HelloFresh here on this podcast, and I'm so excited to tell you all about them. What is HelloFresh, you might be asking? Well, if you're asking that, first of all, have you been living under a rock? Because we talk about it all the time. But I'll tell you anyway. HelloFresh is this awesome, awesome thing where you can get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. So, guys, 
<clears throat> HelloFresh has made our lives so much easier, and it can for you, too. Bust out the grill on a nice warm evening and make dinner from HelloFresh's cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. Hello, we got to try that. I'm going to make Eric do that for me when we get home. He loves a little cookout. Skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with quick breakfasts, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Are you going away this summer? Well, I got you. Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing schedule. And you guys, this is a foolproof step-by-step recipes. These are so easy to do. Anyone can do them. Seriously, whether you're an incredible chef or you've never cooked before, um, it's totally foolproof. So that means you can enjoy cooking to the full extent. It is a wonderful experience and a stress-free summer for you if you try it out. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, we love it. It's like a nice little date night for us. Eric made me some delicious shrimp the other night. It was so yummy. Shrimp and steak, some surf and turf. Uh, it was so good, and I was having a stressful, crazy day. So was he. And while I was putting the babies to sleep, just in that amount of time, he cooked an entire dinner with HelloFresh for me. So when I came downstairs, it was already done. So it's quick and easy and delicious. You guys should check it out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Relax16 and use code Relax16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That is HelloFresh.com slash Relax16. Use code Relax16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Try it out today, and you guys could enjoy America's number one meal kit. This whole time, I've been speaking like this. I swear I'm not like Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, I'm just, just trying to talk to the microphone. We're trying to talk to the mic. Um, I hope this doesn't sound too bad, guys. I don't know if this sounds terrible or if it sounds good. But um, all right, this one is going to be. Th- we never talk about anything controversial here on this podcast. That, well, sometimes we do, but not really. We try to keep it just friendly and fun. But you guys, I we're going to talk about something that's in pop culture right now. That's crazy. I'm nervous because when I asked what people wanted us to talk about. Um, a lot of people said, first of all, that it's too hot. Yeah. And a lot of people said Doja Cat. Oh. Because there's some drama with Doja Cat right now. Which I think is so silly and funny. It is. So I don't know too much about it, so I actually probably shouldn't even talk about it. So know that as I speak on this, I don't know too much about the situation. But if you have been living under a rock and have not been paying attention to the news these days... Um, you might not know that Doja Cat is in the news right now because <laughs> I guess she was talking to um, one of the cast members from Stranger Things in like the DMs. Noah Noah Schnapp, and she like asked if someone else in the cast like had a girlfriend or something like that, right? Was it something yeah, like that? Eddie. Yeah, she asked if he had a girlfriend or was single or something. And ready to mingle. And he said, I don't know, girl, sign his DMs. And she said, you know what? I tried to, but he doesn't have an Instagram. He doesn't have a Twitter. And then Noah was like, well, I'll just screenshot this and post it. Yeah, so then, yeah, so Noah screenshot it and posted it. I guess he, maybe he thought it was funny or something. Yeah, or and I could see the humor in it. I thought, I, I would think that's pretty funny. And Doja Cat's like a pretty silly, funny girl. So I could imagine, I'm like, oh, she might think this is funny. Yeah. So, well, he posted it. And I guess she got real mad. And so I didn't see all this drama when it was unfolding. But I did see um, her on her, she did a live stream and I watched that because it popped up on my For You page, like her doing a live stream and talking about this. And she said that um, she called him kind of like a snake. A weasel. A weasel or a snake. Yeah, she said like, I think she said that's like snake behavior or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And a I lot of like, good quotes. Whoa. A lot of good quotes. Yeah, she was very angry about this. Um, and so now I guess the internet is, or people online are like upset with her for like reaching out to a minor cause he's seven, no, he's I guess 17 Yeah. and, um, asking him about like to slide into someone else's DMs and then she got mad. But Corey was saying, you know, we, we were kind of like 
you know, we weren't like talking about it, but just, he's like, oh, did you see this? And I was like, oh yeah, I saw that. And Corey and I were like, I feel like this could have been solved so easily. Yeah. If she had just, cause like, well, f- you know, it was weird that she was like sliding into his DMs, like, and asking him about that. Like that was weird. Um, for sure. But I feel like she could have just been like, oh, I, whoops, you know, I'm an idiot. I, maybe I shouldn't have DM'd him about that. But what? I thought that guy was hot. I wanted his number. So I don't know. Like, like why you got to put me on blast? Ha 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 ha. She could have been like lighthearted about it. I feel like. And everybody would have laughed along with her and it would have been fine. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I feel like people would have been like, oh, Doja, you're so silly. Like, why are you DMing him about this? Like, this is so silly yeah but instead she like threw a fit yeah. it seems like she's i don't i can't tell if she's actually upset or not like honestly i don't know i don't know I'm like, now either is it a publicity stunt who knows could be you never know these days in the industry you never know. um but like i said i don't know too much about it so i don't have much of an opinion on it i just know that like a lot of people were tweeting me saying like talk about the doja thing so I was. Just, I think it's all ridiculous, and I still like Doja, and I still like Noah. Yeah, I I like them both fine, um, but yeah, I guess there's big draw. I just wish she would stop being so. I feel like she's not being very nice, you guys. Yeah, I think she needs to drop it. She needs to be nice, and I feel like she like the things I have seen. I'm like that's not very nice, Miss Doja, <laughs> but um, maybe she's having a bad day. I don't know. Um, but she seemed very sad about that whole situation. She's been going bananas. He hasn't said anything, has he? I don't think so. As we're recording this, we're recording this Sunday night. Um, this episode comes out Wednesday, so I don't know. Maybe everything will be resolved by then. But as of the time that we are recording this, it's big drama in the news. I don't think he should say anything. Yeah, no, it's not worth saying anything about it. Have you ever slid into someone's DMs trying to get someone's number? No. <gasps> I don't think so. Why you say it like that? Well, who would I, I? I'm not that. I don't do that kind of thing. Like, I'm not like, I've never, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't, that's not my jam. I don't know. I Can you imagine me doing that? Like, yes. I've never. Um, what? Um, excuse me? <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked for someone's number in my life. No, you would never. I, not, like, not that there's something wrong with that. Like, just, I don't think I, I. That's not how I am. I, I don't no. think I would ever ask for someone's number because I'd be, like, scared. Do you think, have I ever? Uh, would you ever ask for someone's number? In the DM DMs? someone. Had not in DMs, I don't think nope. you would. Yeah, no, would I don't would never do that. that. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't think you doing that. I feel like um, you would not do that. But no. that's... We're in the same boat. I think we're both I have DM someone and being like, "Oh my god, you're so cute," and then they'd be like, "Oh my god, thank you," and then I, I'm too afraid to continue it. Like that's the end that's of it. The end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever done anything like that. I feel like back in the Facebook days, maybe I, I would have talked to someone, and but never like that. Like Facebook is where I had conversations with. Remember the fun and comfy conversation I had with that one guy? Yeah. Who I wish we could say his name out loud because um, I love the way you say this guy's name. <laughs> oh, you know, that's something funny I wanted to do with you. I saw a TikTok of um, this girl and she was like, oh, say um, the name of someone you've dated that you, you oh, it, have it's a, introduce for, yeah. yourself as uh, someone you've dated and what you call them with your friends. Yes. And Corey and I always do that. Like, always do that. I, oh, I saw that, Colleen, and I was trying to think of the ones that, because you always, you and me always, always have, have names. But I couldn't remember them. I know, I couldn't either. We always, there's always, always, always names. Like, Corey, I never know the names of the people Corey dates. Not because he doesn't tell me. He does tell me, but then we immediately give them a nickname. Yeah. Like, within seconds. So he'll say, like, I'm just making this up, but he'll say, oh, um, yeah, I'm dating this guy, or I'm hanging out with this guy, Mike. He's a professor. And I'll be like, how's professor? From uh-huh. then on, it's Or always, how's the doctor? Yeah, how's the doctor? Like, or it just never, anything. again, I will yeah. never say his name again. It will only be whatever the nickname is. So, yeah, I can't remember any of the names that we've called the boys you did, but we had crazy, we had, they're funny names, they too. Good. We've had so many funny names for, yeah. like, the guys that you've dated. But I don't have a long track record, so I don't have anything exciting like that. Like, no. I've dated, like, literally two. two people in my whole life. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah, you always had really, really 
funny ones. Yeah. Um, I wish I could remember them. It's because the people I date are insane. Well, I feel well, like Well, I'm don't... insane too, so but <laughs> I'm not like... one to talk. <laughs> I feel like they don't deserve names until they, like, have proven themselves. Yes. So that's why we don't say their name until yeah. they're, like, actually cool and, like... Oh my god, that makes us sound like such snobs. No, that's not snobs. I think it's important to have standards and, like, especially in the... Okay, so I don't speak for, you know gay people obviously because I am not gay but the gay community dating scene just what I've heard from my gay friends um my gay male friends in Los Angeles it's like it's not a fun dating scene really oh Oh, maybe it's it's a fun dating scene but it's not a like a it's a hard dating scene yeah and so you know I don't think it's a, a snobby or rude thing to say that like they have to prove that they're good material because they never are like they're always like in like they're always like they don't they don't want to be serious they don't want to yeah. be committed like and so it's it's not like we have crazy standards it's not no. like your standards are like he has to take me to dinner every single night and he has no. to want to iron my panties like it's like nothing crazy it's like <laughs> you're like I just want him to be nice to me like literally yes, that's your standard it's like my, you're just like yeah. can you just be nice and like, they can't do that and they can't do that so like the, they, they the, don't deserve a name until they can be nice the last man I told them I love you he <laughs> totally disregarded it and then went gay clubbing that like that night and was like oh it's, that was not cool no it was the worst yeah, that was no fun. Well, and like, ugh, he wanted to. He was like, he couldn't pencil you in to his busy schedule. No, like, yeah, I haven't seen him in over a month, and he said, "Oh, the only way I could see him, he's like, oh, I'm have a, an event for work on Saturday, and I can meet you before that." Yeah, and they were like, they. It's not like this was a. Corey's not cuckoo head. Like, well, maybe you are, but we're all cuckoo heads. But like. It wasn't like he was being crazy. Like they were like dating for a very long time. It wasn't like oh they'd been on two dates and then this yeah. guy was like oh while I'm in town I could stop by and um, but like they've been dating a very long time. Like they knew each other very 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 well. Spent so much freaking time together. So it was like kind of annoying that like then Corey says I love you and he's like mm, well I'm going to an event I might be able to stop by it was like ew so gross and he didn't he said no he said it's not gonna work out tonight and then he went gay clubbing yeah oh yeah he said oh it's not gonna work out tonight I can't see you tonight and then it was cause he went out gay clubbing like yeah no bueno so he doesn't deserve a name no he doesn't have a name so yeah but we we'd always give them nicknames um but anyway I wish that what I I, I don't know why oh cause we were talking about sliding into the DMs and how, oh my god, we're insane. I know. This is what I'm saying. Anyone <gasps> listening to our episode is going to be like, what are they talking about? This episode is all over the place. We're a wild ride. Enjoy it. Yeah, that's how Corey and I are. Corey and I will talk like this and be like totally insane and like talk 20 miles a minute and laugh hysterically at random things. And then we will be sitting four <laughs> feet from each other and not speak for hours and I'm not think, I'm not talking like we're both watching TV together or like literally scowls on our faces <laughs> Stop. not speaking to each other for like if anyone saw us sitting next to each other they'd be like they hate, they each, hate other. each other like they despise each other. like we will ha- sit there like with our Scorpio scowls on our faces not speaking for literal hours <laughs> days Day, stop it. It's <laughs> true. No, not day. And then we'll be like, talk. And then one of us will be like, oh my God, I saw this funny thing on TikTok. And then we'll like talk for like hours and hours. Um, but yeah, uh, I just, I I thought that I was, I think I was talking about Facebook. And that's how I used to slide into the DMs. Yes. But, Wait, we're talking about Doja. Oh my God, we are a mess. Yes, we were talking about Doja. Anyways. So, yeah, you guys wanted to talk about Doja, and we ended up talking about... Corey's Corey's dating dating life. life. (laughs) Oh my god, we're so weird. (laughs) Okay, so, um, this one I wanted to read, because this is a crazy story. Okay. So, Trinity, I asked who needs to relax. Trinity the Tuck? Yeah, Trinity the Tuck, said, um, so basically animals dying is who needs to relax. I am house-sitting, and there is a dog and a cat, and I woke up one morning to find the cat dead. (gasps) Um, yeah. That sounds horrifying. That sounds horrible. Um, I, what do you do in that situation? If you're house-sitting and someone else's pet dies while you're house-sitting, that's... That's horrible. Worst-case scenario. You would have to call them, right? Of course. Yeah, that's 
awful. So I hope you're okay. I hope you're not freaking out too much. Um, but it made me think about how I had a cat once that died like unexpectedly really quickly. Like, have you ever had an animal do that? I feel like most people when no. they have pets who pass away, it's like They're old. you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. They're old. Like I've only had one pet that I can think of. Oh yes. Kitty. Her you name did. was Kitty. Yeah. She was like a year old. She was like, oh my gosh, she was the best cat ever. Literally the with her. sweetest, kindest. And she was like only a year old and she just died. And it was so sad. My sister found her and I bawled my brains out. She was just randomly just died it was out of nowhere and uh, we took her to the vet and they found no broken bones no foaming around the mouth like nothing externally that could have shown that something had happened that like they're like she didn't get into any poison she didn't hurt herself there's no scratches on her body like nothing she was perfectly fine and so then they're like we're gonna have to check her out more and they think that she had some um birth defect in like her organs or her heart wow. or something that just it was gonna happen no matter what like she yeah. just was born with some defect you know what that totally ha- happened to my dad's dog really yeah he got he got a labrador puppy and it they had a birth defect and like it was like a couple years old like your, your cat mm-hmm. and it yeah that is so sad yeah so that's the only time that's ever happened to me so I I just feel like I would have a heart attack if I was house sitting for someone and their pet was just dead. Oh like my God. that's horrible. I hope that's you're okay. Sweet. I was so sad about that. Yeah. So I was wondering if you had any stories about that. Do you have any weird okay, so you know how sometimes people on TikTok will be like <laughs> the hamsters. Okay, everyone put in the comments how your hamster died. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's very, very funny when people do that. And they'll be like, Okay, everyone write in the comments how your hamster died, and it's always like the funniest story. The most tragic death. They're tragic. So sad. Do you have any pets that have had weird or bad deaths? I had I had this hamster. His name was You Mi- have a weird hamster death? Yeah, I guess. I had this hamster and his name was Mickey. And like Mickey went wherever I went. Like he, I even brought him to school and he for a little bit. I know. My teacher let me. Mm. She loved me. I was always a teacher's pet. I believe that. You seem like the type. So anyways, Mickey the hamster, like he he would get out in my house. Wait, I'm interrupting you. You seem like the type that would have been like a really big helper for the teacher. Like sharpen all the pencils. Of and like, course. Okay. I okay, so. let me tell you this. While everybody had to do like math and everything, I like got, was assigned like to do like a special mural. <laughs> What? Like painting? <laughs> yeah, painting. So, um, uh, that they were like present to like the principal or whatever. And I don't know, but I didn't have to do school work. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I had a German teacher, a German professor in college that he loved uh, brownies, like yeah. literal brownies. So I would make him brownies and bring him to class and he'd be like, A plus today. <gasps> and I wouldn't have to do whatever assignment everyone was doing. Oh my God. It was amazing. So anyway. Anyways. But- so Mickey. <laughs> Mickey. Mickey the hamster. Mickey would get out of his cage. Horrible things happened to it. My cat got caught him. Mickey survived. Mickey got lost in my house. Mickey survived. My brother would shove him into his Nintendo. Mickey survived. I know. He got lost in my car while we were going to Sacramento. Mickey survived. Okay, Mickey was like a badass. And then one day, we woke up and Mickey was gone. Mickey died. (gasps) And, um, in his cage? Yeah, he was in his cage. And I was like, what the hell? And I know I didn't say what the hell. I was, you know, a, a seven or whatever. <laughs> and so um, my mom took him to the vet. And the vet said uh, his teeth overgrew. Because you're supposed to give hamsters, like, things to chaw on <laughs> right, and gnaw. Okay, yeah, yeah. To, like, gnaw down their teeth. So his teeth overgrew and he starved to death. <laughs> What? That's a horrible oh, way to no, die. Oh, Mickey. Wait, what? His teeth overgrew? I don't know. That's what the vet said. And so... Oh, no. Oh, we felt guilty and sad. Because we never gave it, like, things to chew on. We didn't know. My mom didn't know. She was a single mom oh, no. raising two boys. Like, she didn't know. Were you so sad? Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, Mickey. Rest in peace, dude. Rest in peace, Mickey. We buried him in my grandpa's backyard. Is that illegal? What? Is it? I don't know. My grandpa. I think there's a lot of dead animals in my parents' My backyard. grandpa was the effing sweetest. He okay. We had a funeral. He had a funeral. He my grandpa had a shoebox. Put him in a shoebox. Your hamster. Yes, my grandpa dug a hole in his backyard. Put him into the ground. 
told me to say a few words, then my grandpa said a prayer, and then my grandpa covered him with dirt. That's so sweet. I know. My grandpa was the best. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Is it illegal to bury your pets in the backyard? I feel like it is. Huh. Because then when you sell the house, like... And There's just like skulls of just like dead animals. Whoever gets my parents' house next, ooh, oh, girl. there are thousands. Oh no! Because we had so many pets. I know. We had so many, but we had rabbits and guinea pigs and cats and dogs, and we had a tortoise at one point. We had birds. We had everything, and I would breed mice. <laughs> you guys. Like and rats. We had rats, and we had everything. Wow. Oh my gosh, that is such a sad story. Your poor little hamster, Mickey. No. Eric keeps talking about wanting to get Flynn a hamster. Yeah. And I, as much as I think Flynn would love it, I just think it's not like how it used to be. I feel like when we were younger, um, getting pets was just something everyone did. Like everyone just got pets. And unfortunately, not a lot of people... Um, Back then, it seemed, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but no. I feel like back then, people unfortunately didn't care enough about the animals to yes. really research what they needed. So, like when I was a kid, you know, you could just get a pet and you just put it in a cage and get it whatever food you want and goodbye. But now we yes. have like the resources to do the research about what pets need. And so, whenever Eric's like, oh, we should get Flynn the this or that, and like says a, a pet. I, of course, look into like how to take care of said pet, whatever mm-hmm. the pet may be. And I'm like, holy smokes, there's so much that goes into this, as there should be, because they're living creatures. Yeah. But it means like, you know, most things I won't get because I don't have the time and the resources to like take care of the pets the way they deserve to be taken care of. But I don't feel like when we were kids, people did that. I think you're right on the money. For example, the hermit crab that you guys got, yeah. Flynn. Like, I feel like back in the day, you get a hermit crab, you put it in a cage, whatever, bye. But well, now... and that's, by the way, how they sold it. They were like, oh, here's the cage, here's the hermit crab. Yeah. And so we get the hermit crab at home, and, and Eric's like, they said it was really low maintenance, it was really easy to take care of. No. It was like the easiest thing to take care of at the pet store. Hermit crabs like, are one of the hardest animals to take care of. And so, of course, I want to make sure that it's very well taken care of. So I, yeah. I did, my, the second the hermit crab got to the house, I did research on hermit crabs, and I was like oh no, we have the wrong side cage, lovey. We have the wrong kind of sand. And I like immediately went out and I like, got everything that we needed. You need a heat lamp. Like, you need fresh water. You, you need, need salt, salt water. water. You, you have to have food. moss. They have to clean it out Ugh. all the time. They have to have like, there's so many things that they need. Just get a cat. I know. And so, but I, and I'm so glad that like I learned all that because I never want any animal I have to suffer or even the silkworms that we got. Like yeah. the silkworms, I was like, Oh, you know, they're just worms that you can buy them literally on Amazon. Like, they probably don't need anything. You probably just put them in a box and they're good to go. I didn't know that they needed mulberry leaves. I didn't know that you needed to clean out the cage. So, of course, I knew this once I got them. And I, of course, took the best care possible of them. By the way, listeners of this podcast, (laughs) they've hatched. We'll give you an update next week on them. But they've, uh, they've officially hatched. But anyway, the point is that, like, I never want to own a living human being, a human being, a living creature, (laughs) and not take care of it how it's supposed to be taken care of. And so, back in the day, day, it was like, let's get a mouse, let's get a rat, let's get a cat, let's get a dog. Unfortunately, by the way, I'm not condoning this behavior of how it was back in the day. I think I'm so grateful that now I We didn't know better. Yeah, we didn't. And maybe it wasn't like that for everyone everywhere, but, like... I feel like for me in the in the 90s and in the early 2000s people just like got pets and didn't unfortunately didn't like think enough about how this is a living creature in my home I need to make sure they're taken care of exactly yeah. how they should be taken care of cuz now that's like a huge part of the process totally. of getting a pet obviously and um so yeah I'm like I don't want any pets like I'm fine with Flynn being obsessed with cockroaches and crickets <laughs> like his hermit crab is enough for me so um, we'll see what happens. I've talked in the past about getting a dog, but Corey's over every day with Moosey, so we just... And Flynn loves Moose. And you know who loves Moose? <laughs> Freaking Wesley, y'all. Wesley loves Wesley Moose. Wesley is obsessed with Moose. It's so cute. 
But anyway, um, it is now probably midnight. It's oh, no. past midnight. <gasps> we have to wake up in a few hours to get on a plane, so we're going to go. Um, but thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. I hope you guys liked it. Yeah. If you did, subscribe. And Corey, congratulations. We've popped your podcast cherry. Oh, my God. And I hope we can have you back soon. On... I'd love to. I want to I wanna do an episode with you with the actual microphones. Yes, an official an popping. official popping of the cherry. Um, but thanks for listening, everyone. And we'll be back next week uh, with Eric Stockland, probably. Maybe not. Who knows what's going to happen next week? You never know with us. <laughs> um, but we got to go to bed because we are headed to Vancouver in the morning to do more shows. So Yay. love you. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Love you. Bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.